So, you are a woman who is over the age of 30, and you're putting in all of this work in the gym, you're training, you're eating, and for the most part, maybe you're doing everything that you should be, except for there may be a little slip ups here and there. But it just seems like no matter what you do, nothing seems to be working. You're putting in all of this effort, you're, you're going balls to the wall in the gym, you're eating relatively clean, and you expect to see some kind of fat loss, some kind of muscle gain. You're still expecting to see something, but you're super frustrated right now because your body is not responding in the way that it used to in the past, like when you were in your 20s, or for those of you that are in your 40s and 50s, decades or years earlier. And you're wondering if there's something wrong with you. Should you like stop dieting and just give up and just stay the same? Should you just be super content with being in this body that you don't feel good in anymore? What if I told you that what you're going through right now is not uncommon? And the thing that people don't talk about in the fitness world is the fact that, listen, we are getting older, ladies, and our bodies are simply not the same as they were before, and you need to be more proactive with keeping on top of your hormones. So maybe you do that, and you go to your doctor and you ask for lab results. And they look at your numbers and they tell you, hey, there's nothing wrong with you. You are fine. You are normal. But you don't feel normal. Your body doesn't feel normal. You know that something is not right and you want to get to the bottom of it, but you feel like, my gosh, nobody is listening. Well, I want to tell you right now that I know the situation that you're going in and I'm listening to you. And today I want to share with you some facts some information and some really important concepts that you need to grasp about your hormones and why your hormones are the driving factor behind the change that you need. But more importantly today, I want to tell you exactly what lab values you need to be asking for your doctor that you sometimes will need to fight for and take a look at to make sure that you are fully functional and that your body starts to respond the way it should and then you can achieve the body of your dreams. First of all, if this is your first time here, I want to welcome you, welcome you back to my channel, welcome you to my channel. And for my returning subscribers and viewers, I want to thank you so much for sticking with me and welcome back. You know we're going to be in gear for a really in-depth conversation, honey, because you know how I am. So girl, go on, get you some popcorn or whatever, get your next meal, get a glass of wine or water, whatever you, protein shake, whatever you have on deck, because we're going to be talking today. If this is in fact your first time here, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and then you click the bell notification. So that way when I go live, because I go live a lot. I also do premieres a lot, and when I have new videos, you simply do not miss a thing. And even if you are a returning subscriber, go ahead over to that button and press it anyway. Make sure, make sure that you're getting all notifications so you never miss a single thing. Now, for those of you that are here and you're meeting me for the very first time, I want to welcome you. My name is Roxy Beckles, and I'm a fitness professional that's been in this industry for over 21 years. I've been, I've been training, my gosh, since 1997, and now. What I get to do is I get to help women from around the globe in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and beyond to help them to rewrite their stories, to really get in tune with their why when it comes to their fitness and helping them to put that stuff in action to get the results they want. We have a deeper conversation about fitness here on my channel. And as you can see here, this is an old video of me back in my heyday of bodybuilding. I was a for I'm a former IFBB pro who had the opportunity to compete at the Olympia. And my gosh, it was some of the best times of my life. And what I want to tell you though, guys, before we start up is I want to have you stay to the very end of this video because I have a free gift for you, a masterclass. I've been talking about it on all of my videos so far because it's that good and I know it's going to help you. And it's called Your Best Body Yet. And in this masterclass, I'm talking about four crucial shifts that every woman needs to make, especially those of you over the age of 30, over the age of 35, over the age of 40, over the age of 50, who are trying to get their bodies back, trying to get back in control. Honey, it's not about your diet and training right now. That is the third shift. There are four shifts that you need to make to really see your goals become your reality. Stick to the end of this video because I'm going to tell you how to get into this class because it's totally free. And right now, as of this current video right now, um, I am taking on new rock stars. I'm actually looking to work with four more women 
who want to work with me between November and the end of this year. There are eight weeks left in this year, starting November 1st. And what's crazy is not only is this like eight weeks left in the year, but it's eight weeks left in the decade. And I'm going to be talking about this on my channel. What have you achieved this year? What have you achieved in this decade? For yourself when it comes to your fitness and what are you going to be doing differently in 2020 but specifically i want to work with four women who want to finish off this year finish off this decade strong and get ready for the next year on the right foot and it starts now ladies so stick around to the very end i'm going to tell you more about that how you can work with me and how we can really take your training and your nutrition right on to that next level so let's go ahead and jump into the conversation you know, I'll tell you what, this whole fitness thing is not just about diet and training. I cannot drive that home enough for you. I really want you to understand that fitness needs to become a greater conversation. You need to look at the totality of how taking control of your health, taking control of your body, taking control of your eating and your mindset, how that's going to affect all facets, facets of your life. I know this because I've seen it with my own life and I've seen it with those clients that I've worked with as well over the years. Now, a lot of folks think that just changing your diet, just changing your training, just showing up at the gym is enough to elicit change within the body. And that's definitely true. That is definitely true. I'm never going to devalue that because that is a big part of the equation that has to be in place. I mean, that's how I got into personal training and have a business at any, for any reason, you know, is that the diet and training has to be in order. Now, the thing about it is this. If your body was like a vehicle, right? And the things that run that vehicle, I mean, your food is like your gasoline. It's going to be the thing that fuels you to keep going forward. Your training is like the engine and all those parts that like, you know, rev up and that are the powerhouse behind you. But you cannot work that car without working circuitry, right? If you have the fuse box and the this and the that and all these little intricate little pieces that make the starter start the engine, that make the electronics work in your car, those little circuits are super important, just as important as your engine, just as important as the gasoline that you put in it. Otherwise, the car cannot proceed forward, correct? Well, in that analogy, your body is the same way and your hormones are the circuits. And hormonal health is such a huge thing for us women as we get older because what happens after the age of 25 is, honey, those hormones start to degrade at a huge uh, degree at a fast rate. For instance, DHEA and growth hormone, which are two important hormones in the body that are responsible for um, metabolism and a bunch of other things. It just, it, I don't, I'm not even going to the whole list. Look up DHEA. Maybe I'll do a video on that. But those levels drop exponentially at the age of 25 and every year afterwards. So by the time you're in your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, your DHEA levels are like really super low. And so is growth hormone. Now that also impacts cortisol because DHEA and cortisol work together. For many of you in your lifestyles, you're so busy, you've got so much going on in your lives are so high stress that your cortisol levels are out of, the, out of like, out of whack and through the roof as well. How can you expect your body to function when there's so much internal dysfunction? And we're only talking about two hormones here. Think about thyroid hormone. For a lot of you that seem to have a very sluggish metabolism, you hold on to body fat, everything that you eat sticks to your body, well, you could have an underactive thyroid. And that's a very common thing for very women, for very many women after the age of 30. And it doesn't mean that you are hypothyroid, but you could have normal levels that are suboptimal and you still are symptomatic. That's the problem. For a lot of folks, when you start to go to your doctors to get these numbers checked and then they tell you there's nothing wrong with you, but you are symptomatic like a mofo, okay? Now, let's talk about your sex hormones. We all know as women, as we age, our estrogen levels are like on the decline from the time you start your period, <laughs> okay? So the first time you menstruated, that clock is running out. We have a biological clock and everybody's 
body is so different. Like some women in their 30s go through menopause because of X, Y, Z reasons. Some women had to have hysterectomies and, and their you know ovaries even taken out the entire uterus. Some women may go into early menopause or in things that just really affect you. Some women are dealing with PCOS, but you don't know until you check. And when your estrogen levels are out of whack, honey, that in your body, if it's high estrogen, your body puts on fat in your hips, your butt, your thighs, sometimes in the abdominal area as well. But the gynoid fat patternings is what you're going to see with a lot of women. So if you have a lot of fat, excess fat in that lower half, you might want to see where your estrogen levels are and you might need to start supplementing with progesterone or getting your numbers back into play. As you get older, testosterone levels increase for those of you who are in menopause. That's why you see that belly coming on and you gaining weight in the middle. So it's going to be very important for you to know what your levels are and to start learning how to ask for them and how to read labs. Now, I'm not going to go into the conversation today about what the values should be because that's a separate conversation. What I might do is go ahead and do individual series for each of these hormones that we're going to talk about today and optimal levels and the best ways to test them. But today I want to talk about what you should be asking for, what you should be looking for and kind of why it's important. So let's see this as a part one. And I do have a playlist here on my YouTube channel where I've talked about hormones in the past and I'll be sure to link that for you guys so you can kind of keep up with the series, especially as time goes on and I do more videos. So the first hormone that I want you guys to really stay on top of uh, is thyroid hormone, thyroid. Now, the important thing about thyroid testing is that when you go to the doctor, your doctor is going to look at two values for your thyroid. And those are not going to tell you a dang thing about how your th thyroid is functioning. The first thing they're going to look at is TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone. And the second one is T4. So TSH is a hormone that the, the brain releases and it goes on over to your pituitary gland. And when it hits the pituitary gland, it like tells the thyroid, tells it like that, just go ahead and tells the, um, the body like, okay, thyroid, wake up. We need some thyroid hormone and we need you to release T4. So that's why they look at those. Is the pituitary gland getting that signal from the brain to say release thyroid stimulating hormone to go ahead and tell the thyroid to release T4? Great, but guess what? That's not the end of the equation. Because for some of you, the T4 isn't the problem. Sometimes the TSH isn't the problem, but your T3 is the problem, or our T3 is a problem, or your thyroid antibodies are the problem. Now, that gets really complicated, doesn't it? The other thing is that these values only show what is floating around in the blood and not necessarily what may be active or telling you how the body is actually processing these things. So... We want to ask for specific values so we know what's circulating in the blood. How is the body like actually breaking up these, these hormones? And is it working in a way that's going to tell us if that organ, the thyroid, is functioning op optimally? So just to give you a gist on this whole thing. So TSH, pituitary gland releases that, goes to the thyroid, and the thyroid, boom, releases T4. But the process continues on when, the, when that T4 is then converted by the thyroid to T3. And T3 is that hormone that pretty much regulates your metabolism. So if that's really off or it's not working in there somehow, then your thyroid is not going to be doing what it needs to do and your metabolism is going to be slow. You're going to have all of these crazy symptoms like, you know, brittle hair, dry skin, fatigue, and a bunch of other things. The inability to lose weight, weight gain, so many things like being cold all the time, having cold hands. Ladies, it's that serious. And you might be thinking, oh, you know, this is just, you know, how I always am. But your organs are screaming at you and you don't even freaking know it. Right. So when you go to your doctor in order to know if your thyroid hormone is, is optimal or sorry, if your thyroid, the organ is acting and working optimally, you need to ask for these values. Write these down, okay? You need to know your TSH, your thyroid stimulating hormone. You need to ask for your free, unbound T4 hormones, okay? That's unbound. You need to ask for your free, unbound T3. 
to know how the body is converting that T4. And then you also need to look at your RT3, reverse T3. Reverse T3 is like T3's dark matter. So what's going to happen is the body has, you know, it's, it's floating up in your body and it's looking to cause some trouble. So it's like, ooh, I'm going to go sit in the T3 receptors so that way T3 can't do anything over here. I'm going to sit on it and then the thyroid is going to be all messed up and I'm going to mess up her body. Ha 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 ha. That's what it thinks. <laughs> in my mind, that's what it thinks. So you need to make sure that your RT3 levels are a certain level, you know, on the lower side. So that way we know that T3 can sit into the receptors it's supposed to and affect change on the body in the way that it's designed. So TSH, free T3, free T4, and RT3. And for some of you, you also need to check out your thyroid antibodies as well to ensure that you don't have things like Hashimoto's or Graves' disease and a bunch of other things that can um, be affected by the thyroid antibodies. Five values, ladies. And if you're not getting all five of those, you have no clue with how your thyroid is functioning. So if you've had labs in recent you know, weeks or the last month or so, and you went in specifically because you thought there was something wrong with your body, and your doctor is telling you that you're normal and you only have two values, you need to go back and request those values. Now, here's the other tricky thing about this, about the thyroid specifically, and this is why I want to spend a lot of time on it. A lot of times your doctors will look at your numbers and they'll say, yeah, you're normal, but you're on the low end of normal and you are still dysfunction. Dis, um, you're, you're, you're still dysfunction there. Okay. You feel like crap. You have all the symptoms of maybe hypothyroidism and like, you're like, wow, like I really don't feel good, but my doctor says I'm okay. I have had many clients where this has happened and we had to get them to specialists who will look at them and treat them based on their symptoms and look at sub optimal levels and get them up to optimal. Optimal ranges is where you want to be. And for everybody that that number is a little different. Doctors have what ranges they want to stay within and they will go ahead and medicate you in a way to make that happen. A lot of the time for thyroid dysfunction, they're going to look at more natural like desiccated thyroid or just T3 alone or whatever it is that they need to do to get you back on your level space off of your numbers and how you feel. So really important to learn those those numbers and to actually go in and ask for it. Again, I'll do a separate video where I'll tell you lab values that you need to focus on. But for right now, I want to do this first video on just knowing what the heck to ask, ask for. The next thing that I want to go into, we talked about your thyroid. Let's talk about your ovaries, ladies. <laughs> and that's what makes us uniquely women. You know, like we have these this uterus and these ovaries, which can wreak havoc on your body when this whole system is not in play. I had some major issues with my whole reproductive system when I had this massive fibroid inside of me, 14 centimeters. Like it was incredible in how it really affected my body in so many ways. So many of you are walking around with fibroids and stuff like that. Ladies, get that taken care of. I did a video on my fibroid journey and I'm going to do a follow up because at the time of this video that I'm recording today, it's been about, let's see, August, September, October. It's been about just about a year, a year and almost three months since I've had my, my fibroids, their surgery. And my body is like night and day difference. Reproductive health has so much um, impact on everything that we don't even realize. So what you want to look at are your estrogen levels. Okay. You want to look at E1, E2. You also want to look at your um, progesterone levels as well. And for those of you that are menstruating, you want to look at your luteinizing hormone as well as the follicle stimulating hormone, FSH. Okay, so two estrogen, E1 and E2, E1, E2, and E3. I forget. I'll go ahead and I'll interject <laughs> right here. <laughs> but you want to look at you want to go ahead and look at those levels with your estrogen your uh you also want to look at your progesterone levels because that's super important my gosh there is such a connection between progesterone levels and um aldosterone in the body and cortisol and so many other things that have to do with water retention like when your progesterone and your estrogen levels are super off they're out of balance and they're out of whack the water retention that some women see is incredible. Not only the fat gain, but the water retention too. 
And these systems are all interconnected, and that's why it's so important to know what's going on with that. Your follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, and then also, of course, you also want to see what your natural testosterone levels, because ladies, we do have that in our bodies as well, and being on top of that is important. For so many of you, you might discover that there is some dysfunction in there, that you have low progesterone, that you have like, um, you know, high estrogen, or that you have super low testosterone levels. And if those are any of those are off, your ability to build muscle also is hampered. So it's really important for you to make sure that you stay on top of it and what is going on with that system, your reproductive system. Now, if you've had a hysterectomy, if you've had your ovaries removed, if any of that stuff you know, is something that you deal with, you need to work very closely with your doctors and the best protocols to make sure that you maintain your body just in the way that it's supposed to function for a woman at your age. So hopefully you are supplementing, hopefully you know, you're taking at least bioidentical creams or you're taking you know, actual you know, pills, pellets, and people kind of do, the pellets are like eh, hit or miss for people. But whatever it is that you need to do to make sure that you stay where you need to be is super duper important. So stay on top of your reproductive health. So the next hormone that I wanna go ahead and bring some focus to is your cortisol, your cortisol levels. And I'll tell you what, like for so many of you, oh my gosh, cortisol is through the roof. And your cortisol levels are directly uh, linked to your adrenals. So if you've ever heard of adrenal burnout, adrenal fatigue, all of that has to do with the balance of your cortisol levels. And our, our times nowadays, so many of you are stressed. And let me tell you something, I know that life because I used to be somebody that's stressed and worried about everything. I was always 100% stressed out about literally everything in life. And I'm not saying that I don't have stress now. I like to say I lead a low stress life because I've learned how to deal with it in a very um, healthy and sane manner. And that's the same stuff that I actually teach my clients to do to get greater control over themselves, their lives, their bodies, to help to take their cortisol, cortisol down so they can have you know the success in weight loss and all the things that they're trying to achieve physically. So with cortisol, Cortisol is the body's uh, fight or flight hormone. It works alongside adrenaline as well. So when your cortisol goes up, so does your adrenaline. And I actually did a video on how this impacts emotional eating and your cravings and all that stuff. And you guys should check out that video. It's called Overcoming Emotional Eating. I'm gonna put the link up for you right over here so that way you see it and also in the description for this video. So you can go ahead and watch that masterclass and learn how to deal with these food cravings and all this stuff that come up uh, when you're stressed out. There, there is a reason that's happening and uh, your cortisol levels have a huge deal to do with that. So as the body gets more cortisol, it forces into that fight or flight system. And you're not supposed to be in that all the time, but our lives in this century, in this you know society that we're in, forces us into that kind of existence on a daily basis. And so your cortisol levels need to be in check. How do you get them in check? Recovery, sleeping, being really super active about your environment. Sometimes supplementation can also really greatly help. But again, I did a video on cortisol and I'll put the link for that one specifically where you can watch that. And I'm gonna do a follow up in the next couple of weeks on this topic as well. The best ways to check your cortisol levels and cortisol works along with DHEA, so it'll kind of get you to see that. Um, but the best way to check your cortisol levels is by doing a saliva test, a swab test throughout the day. Because the way that your body is supposed to work, uh, and your cortisol also works with your circadian rhythms. So the way that the body works when it comes to cortisol is that cortisol levels tend to raise around, let's say, 3 a.m. or so. They start to raise up. And by like early morning, like around like 6 to 7 a.m., that's when it's supposed to be kind of at its peak point. And that's when you start to wake up. You know, if you've ever been the, one of those people that like naturally wakes up in the morning at a specific time, a lot of that has to do with the rise in cortisol. So then cortisol peaks in the morning and then throughout the day, it's supposed to fall and where, where it levels out through the end, by the end of the day when you're supposed to be sleeping and recovering. For so many of you, that system is way out of whack. 
So like in the morning, your cortisol levels could be down and then they rise up throughout the day. And at night you're like this, you're, you're like one of those people that's like always awake at night. You might want to check on your cortisol levels because they probably are out of whack. And for some of you, they are flatlined like this. And if those levels are not right, honey, let me tell you something, that belly fat, that's when that belly fat starts to come on. And that's when you start having some issues with weight loss and fat loss and a bunch of other things. So getting your cortisol levels are so super important. So you want to go ahead, get a saliva test. Now, sometimes the doctors don't necessarily do saliva tests. They do serum cortisol. The problem with serum cortisol is that you're not seeing the levels throughout the day. Because when you do the saliva test, you have to do it in the morning, uh, mid-morning, mid-afternoon, and then at night. So you get to really fully see how those levels are going throughout the day. When you take a shot or when you get a, a needle and they are testing serum, okay, it's only that one little speck in the day at the time that you've taken it. And so it's not really a full picture on how your adrenals are working. You can see if your doctor does saliva testing, but they also have saliva testing, uh, t saliva test kits that you can buy nowadays on Amazon. And oh, oh my gosh, I've even been in Target. The Target that's by me, the one that's over in Beverly Hills, they have this whole section of test kits, like for everything you can think about, like food allergies, vitamin levels, cortisol, like it's incredible even though like 23 and me and all that stuff and they sell them right there like nowadays we are in such an amazing time in medicine and in technology where you can take control of your numbers and your body and knowing what it is that how you should be functioning so ladies do that this is your body don't let the medical industry tell you what you should do what you should know because your doctors are going to fight you i'm telling you this right now some of you, your doctors are going to fight you and they're going to tell you, no, you don't need that. Why do you need to know that? What do you care? You're not the phlebotomist. You're not drawing my blood. Do what I'm asking you to do because I need to know how my body is functioning and whether it's optimal or not. And they act like it's crazy for you to ask these questions. So you need to be strong. You need to stand up for yourself sometimes if you have a doctor that doesn't want to do these tests. And if they don't want to do it, then get yourself somebody else. Like, okay, I need a referral out. I need to talk to someone. Give me a specialist because I need to know my numbers. Don't let them tell you otherwise. Okay, I just really, really had to get that out there because, Lord, I've seen, I've seen some craziness. And, and the, 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 the medical industry, a lot of times, they're about keeping you sick. They don't want you to really know anything because how are they going to charge you and get, make money off of you? They don't want you to get healthy. They don't want you to know how to read your labs, you know, take control. So with cortisol, again, you can go ahead and buy your own test. There are, there are also labs like Quest Labs, and I forget the other one. Um, starts with a Z. I, I forget the name of it right now. It escapes my mind. But they have different labs where you can actually also go in and request your own blood tests and have those. If the doctor says no, then you can have your blood drawn. Like, here are my numbers. Now will you draw my blood? And now can you refer me to a specialist? Point blank, the end. So... The moral of this video is to give you more knowledge and more insight into your body and to really think about the fact that it's not just it's not just calories in calories out even though i always say that because it is but these things can also affect that to a great degree and it's not just showing up to the gym not just showing up in the kitchen eating right because if these numbers are off your body is not going to be functioning op functioning optimally enough for you to actually see the fruits of your labor become your reality what's beautiful is that if you are dealing with any of this stuff that i am someone who is really well versed at looking helping clients to learn how to read their numbers and to really listen to their bodies and ask the right questions to their doctors in the process of the of us changing their bodies what i will say is that the journey for you may be a long journey so you have to be in it for the long haul and taking really every step by step and patience to get to that next level and if you are a woman who's ready for that then i do want to talk to you because i am like i said taking on new clients right now to work with me and i want to start off with looking at the next eight weeks with you setting some specific goals with you and to really look at the why's behind what you're doing and why it's important to you why you have to be successful this time once we figure that out then we can look at the how how do we get that going how do we put the right plan in place and then keep you accountable 
my coaching is more like mentorship. I realized for me that I've taken my knowledge with fitness and nutrition and balled it up into this beautiful package that also deals very greatly in lifestyle coaching and behavior modification coaching. And it doesn't matter if you are a competitor or not, because even if you have competition goals, guess what? That's a fleeting moment in your life then you're still faced with what you need to do to maintain those changes and get over you know, the things that have hold, held you back in the past and establish the habits, the patterns, the mindset, and the behaviors to keep the changes that you want in the long term. And if you are there and you think that, hey, this is the woman to help me to get there even further, then I wanna talk to you. The first thing I want you to do though is go to my web- website, rockstarfitness.com. That's R-O-X-S-T-A-R fitness.com slash VIP coaching. Now I offer three different coaching levels and actually there's four different coaching levels, but I have something for every budget starting from $97 a month all the way up. So money isn't really an excuse if you have it to invest in yourself, but we can decide what level is going to be right for you. And if you watch that video, you get a deeper sense of what it is that I have to offer and whether or not that is something that you can and want to do for you if you're ready. Now, again, if you're somebody who does not have a big budget for coaching right now, but you still want to work with me, you still want to get to be able to be in my circle, you still want to be able to get workouts, you want to learn a lot of this stuff yourself as well, then you need to join my membership community, which I have hosted on Patreon, and that's rockstarfitness.com slash Patreon. When you go to that link, you can see more about my program and how everything is set up there. And if you want to start up right away, you don't need to ask any questions, go ahead and sign up. But if you want to get on the phone with me to make sure that this is the right decision for you, then you can set up a call on that page as well. Now I did promise you a free gift that if you stay to the end, I'm going to tell you about, and this is that gift right here. It is called your best body yet. And your best body yet is a um, is a masterclass that I put together for women out there who are looking to push their workouts in a new direction, working looking to push their fitness and their nutrition in a new dire- direction. And you've been trying different things, but you know that there's more that you could be doing. To me, there are four different major important shifts that every woman needs to make if changing her body means something and not only changing it for the here and now but changing it for the lifetime if that's important for you or to you then you need to get up in this master class and learn exactly what they are and put the, you know the tools in place that i have for you to make those shifts yourself and so you want to go to my website right here rockstarfitness.com slash your best body reserve a time i have different slots available and get yourself in there to enrich yourself and really take this training thing up a whole other notch so ladies thank you so much for joining me if you have questions or comments go ahead and post them below Have you seen any differences with your own physique when you started to pay attention to your hormones? And what were some of the things that you discovered along the way? Do you have questions about your hormones and how they impact your body and your metabolism and your efforts? Post them in the comments as well so we can have an open dialogue. So much of this stuff isn't really talked about in the mainstream spotlight. I mean, they talk about it, but not enough. And I wanna have these important conversations with you. I wanna motivate you and keep you focused on what's important to help you to get the body of your dreams and not only get there, but to stay there forever. Be sure to subscribe so that way you don't miss a single video at all and click the bell notification so that way when I go live, honey, you know, you know, or have premieres and new videos, you know. Like this video right now, give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye. (laughs)